Hello there. What's up guys? Today I'm going to be going over how I paint my armor. There's a lot of steps involved with making a costume look good, but painting is one of the most important because it really brings it to life and makes it look real. There's a lot of stages in the painting process as well, and I'm going to go over all of the ones that I use in order to make my costumes look like this. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be taking this plain, unpainted gauntlet and basically turning it into this, a painted version. So after you have cut out and glued together all of your foam pieces and turned them into an armor piece, you're going to use a heat gun to really seal in all the foam. And this is what a heat gun looks like. It's just one of the cheaper ones at like a hardware store. But basically it heats up the foam and then seals it in. You can see there's a little bit of a shine on the foam when it hits the light. And that shine is indicating that the foam has been sealed, which basically means that it's now harder and it's less spongy. Uh, this is great because you don't want your paint to be absorbed into the foam. You want it to sit on top of the foam um, because if it gets inside the foam, it acts, it acts like a sponge and kind of just soaks it up and it's really easy to rub it off. So you really don't want like that spongy texture still on the foam. If you hit it with a heat gun, it will close the pores in the foam and cause it to be sort of like a harder surface. And uh, after that, what you'll want to do is hit it with some Mod Podge. And this is kind of like a, a primer uh, for foam. It basically just acts as another shell, another layer on top of the foam to prevent the paint from soaking into the foam. One thing to be aware of uh, before you start painting on your Mod Podge is the type of brush that you're using. Uh, so basically, here's two types of brushes that I've used in the past. I'd really recommend using one like this that has really soft bristles as opposed to one like this with really thick, hard bristles uh, because the thicker bristles will leave like a trail in the uh, gauntlet and it will cause like some streaks to appear and you don't want those because like it'll show through when you paint it so you want to get like a paintbrush that's really soft not like a cheap one that's like really hard this feels like hay or something like horse hair whereas this one is like really soft so yeah get one like this not like this those harder brushes can be used for weathering, which we will get into later on, so don't get rid of them just right away. Also, the type of Mod Podge that you use really doesn't matter. Like this one says it is a gloss finish. It really doesn't matter. There's like a matte version that's in yellow. Uh, if you go to like a craft store, you'll see a bunch of different colors, but it really doesn't matter since you're going to be painting over it anyway. As long as you don't buy like the spray adhesive version, this is just Mod Podge regular. It's not an adhesive, so it will just like coat the foam. It won't make it sticky. Uh, so yeah, that's just something to consider. So now I'm going to start applying Mod Podge. It's just like a white PVA glue-ish type material. I've also heard that you can use PVA glue and water mixed together, and it does about the same thing as the Mod Podge, but I've never tried that. So I'm just going to do what I've always done to start applying it on. Uh, just like a normal paint, you just paint it all over, and uh, it does like appear wet, as you can see in the light. So it's a good indicator as to where you've been. Um, you just want to try to avoid like these globs of paint or Mod Podge. Yeah, just make sure you go over it and get rid of any of those that are left over. This stuff does tend to self-level pretty nicely, as long as there's no like extreme brush marks like I mentioned with the harder brushes you want to stay away from those but it should for the most part self level I'm just gonna skip ahead because this can be pretty monotonous you'll also want to do a few coats like after this stops being really shiny and turns kind of you know harder uh, you'll want to put on a second coat probably uh, it's just a preference. I usually do it, but you don't have to. So I've gone ahead and painted on a layer of Mod Podge, and I wanted to let you know that 
you'll want to rinse your brush off because this stuff kind of acts like a lip, like a sort of plastic material. And if you don't wash your brush off, it will dry and completely harden the brush. So you won't be able to use it again. Uh, so definitely rinse it off when you're done with it. So after the Mod Podge has dried, we can go ahead and start painting. Uh, you'll want to look it over and make sure everything is dry. You can see it's uh, less shiny. It's no longer wet. Uh, so yeah, that kind of indicates that it's now dry and it has, it still has its flexibility because it's EVA foam. I'm going to be using this type of paint. This is Plaid FX Flexible Acrylic. I'm not sponsored, but I just love this stuff. It's really good. It's specifically designed for EVA foam cosplay, and it comes in a few different colors. There's not a whole lot of options yet. I uh, hope they kind of expand it, but uh, this is the white. They call it Blizzard. Uh, they come up with like fancy names for it, but yeah, this is the one that I use for the clone uh, base color white. Uh, it's really good because it flexes, uh, so if you like bend it too far, there won't cause cracks uh, or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to be using. Uh, this is the white. And the orange is this one. It's a little bit darker than uh, I guess I would have liked for like the 212th Legion Troopers, but it's the only thing they have close enough. I guess you could mix like this and a yellow version or a yellow paint to get like a lighter orange color, but. I don't feel like uh, getting the correct ratio by mixing different colors, uh, so I'm going to go with this one. I would also like to point out that I'm using white EVA foam, and this is really good. Uh, if I'm Since I'm painting like the gauntlet white, uh, this foam being the same color uh, really helps uh, with like if the paint chips off and the foam underneath of it is seen, it won't be like a totally different color like you know pink or orange or something uh, it'll actually be the same color as what you need it to be um and i can actually demonstrate this is the old gauntlet that i made and i used a gray foam and it started to crack a lot this has been through two years worth of service so this doesn't just happen overnight uh, but yeah this is gray foam and when the paint cracked, you can clearly see uh, the gray foam kind of coming through underneath. So, yeah, you'll want to use like a white foam if you plan to paint it white. Foam typically comes in either white, gray like this, or black. So try to pick whichever one uh, is closest to the color that you're going to paint it. Uh, so this is, this was not the right choice, I'll say that. But this, this is the newer version and I'm doing it right this time. All of these are gonna be white foam to match the clone trooper. So when you're painting, obviously you'll want your paint and you'll also want a little tub of water. I tend to use warm water because it like rinses the brush off easier and kind of gets the paint off better. And then you're going to want paper towels, of course, to help really wash off all the rest of the paint. But let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, just a, whatever amount of paint you need and just start painting it on. Since this is white on white, it's probably not going to look a whole lot different. But one thing that I've learned is that there are different shades of white out there. So you'll like if you paint something with one brand of white paint uh, and then try to use a different brand, like with another armor piece, like if you did this gauntlet with white this white and then like the biceps with a different color white uh, they could look very different in the end and you don't want that on like a costume that's supposed to be unified I guess even if you weather it you still want the base coat to be the same so you know just make sure you're using the same brand uh, I've noticed different shades of white exist
So real quick, I've been painting this gauntlet and one thing that tends to happen uh, when you're using this kind of paint is you'll like paint over it and then you'll try to go back over it with another coat of paint but it won't have dried yet or wouldn't have dried yet so it'll kind of tear up the current layer and this can kind of happen it's it's not very noticeable like from a distance but if you get up close you can really see like uh, the bumps in the paint so if this does happen to you uh, don't worry just let it dry that's the key just you know don't touch it it'll just mess it up even more so let it dry and then you go back over it with another coat of paint and it should level out for the most part and even if it doesn't after like a second coat uh, we're gonna weather it after this so this like scratching and stuff will just add to the weathering effect and you won't really notice it so you know don't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out perfectly okay so after this has dried we're going to go ahead and put on our orange color now this was just two layers of paint obviously if you look closely it's pretty incomplete you can still see some of the layers but since I'm going to weather it anyway it's not a huge deal so I'm just going to grab some tape this is specifically for like painting it's called like frog tape or something but you can use any other kind of tape you just want to have one long continuous piece of tape and you gotta have to know, uh, I guess, beforehand where to put the tape, but basically I've already marked out where it's going to go. You want to try to keep the stripes uh, even on both gauntlets, so you don't want like one really big stripe on your right arm and one small one on your left. Yeah, just carefully line it up. And should be good for one of them. You want to make sure that the first or the white layer is dry before you put this on or else it'll peel it right off. It can take some time to get that stripe on there, but it's well worth making it as straight as possible. So, that's one on there. Let's get the other one. Okay. We got that on there. And you can always double check it by putting them side by side just to make sure they're both the same size on the top and bottom. Now for the like the end part of the gauntlet, I just like to fold it over and do like that. I usually paint the inside since the uh, sh uh, elbow pad is going to be painted orange anyway. It doesn't really matter if it gets on here, so that little bit of overhang doesn't really matter. But if you're going to have like a white elbow pad like this one, uh, yeah, that might matter to you. But now I'm just going to go ahead and paint on some orange in the same way that I painted on the white. Okay, so here I've gone ahead and painted on two coats of orange on the elbow pad and the stripe. So I'm just going to let that dry and then we'll get on to the weathering. Now I'm going to paint on this white chipping detail like I did on this one. As you can see, I just kind of uh, painted over top of the orange line underneath. Now that did leave a little, little bit of a mark you can still see the line underneath, but if 
if you get like far enough away you won't notice it at all especially if you're like moving you won't see the line uh, it's only when you get right up close if you're super picky about it then you could like uh, mask off where the scratchers are gonna go before you paint on the orange line but that's just a lot of work and I don't really think it's necessary it's easier to just paint the stripe on there and then weather it afterwards uh, because it's a thicker uh, type of paint it does tend to leave that lip on there but I'm not super picky about it so I'm just gonna weather it like it is I like to start off and you want to start small like you don't want to just go crazy I start off by just putting a little bit of uh, random kind of spots along the edge and you can go back over with the second coat but I just like to rough up the edges a little bit to get rid of that super straight line uh, it's not like it has to be perfect obviously it's meant to be weathering so it's random so just kind of go over all of the lines make sure not, not to miss any sections because like you know it would be super obvious if you just didn't paint one side so now that the edges have been roughed up just a little bit uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some weathering around the edges and this basically just looks like this you're going to take a little bit of paint and just kind of brush it on the edge get all those corners make it look like you know something hit the corner and rubbed off paint and you just want to do that if you mess up just rub it off just a little bit make sure to get on the inside too then you can kind of make some scrape marks as well and if you're doing it like on the compad you know make sure you get all of that as well you really want the compad to kind of stand out so you want to highlight the edges and yeah make sure you get that on the elbow piece as well because otherwise it's just gonna look like a giant orange you know block and you kind of want to highlight the details so that's kind of what it's looking like just go over the inside don't forget that and again it's weathering so it's never gonna be like perfect I like to kind of scrape sometimes, make it look like, you know, scarring damage. It's okay to go like overboard or I guess over the, just the line because like this, you want it to kind of look like it's been scratched off. So it's not just a, a bead of white paint, you know. And if it starts to look too, I guess, faded, that just means you need more paint. So go back in. Oh, looks like too much. That's okay. You want to try to highlight the corners and any of the edges more so than just like the empty spaces because the corners are going to get hit a lot more than just the empty areas and for the neat or for the elbows these little seam lines also count as edges so you'll want to highlight those just kind of rub some paint right along that line and it'll give it a nice definition I'll compare it to this one and you can see oh, this one has a lot more of paint along that 
middle part of the elbow and it makes it pop a lot more. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. So now that the edges have been highlighted, uh, I'm just going to start adding some real scratches in the middle sections. It's important to note that uh, like you wanna try to avoid the direct middle of a piece. Like you don't wanna just have a scratch right through the middle. You want to kind of have it off to the side a little bit. Like you'll notice none of these are directly in the middle of the gauntlet. Uh, they're all, all kind of spread out along the sides. And like if there is one in the middle, it's not in the direct middle. It's like lower down. So just keep that in mind. Don't put something like right in the middle or else it, it just looks obvious that it was placed there. Uh, but yeah. I like to start drawing these, I guess, more uh, noticeable scratches by just slowly putting like some marks where I plan to put like a bigger version of it. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind is the direction that the scar is facing. Like these are all going diagonally upward towards the elbow pad. So on this one, you'd want to make it the opposite. You'd want to have it leaning leaning this way, up towards its own gauntlet. Not like, you know, the same. And you probably don't want them to be flat either. Uh, that just wouldn't look right. You'd want them to be more diagonal, kind of dynamic shaped. Uh, it just looks better for scratches. But basically, you just want to kind of find a place where you want to put a scratch. Let's say like, I have one right there. So I'm just going to kind of outline where it's going to be. And just kind of put down the idea. all about those happy little accidents so that's how it's gonna look uh, this is just the first layer so it looks really shallow I'm gonna go back in with a second layer once that dries and just kind of go from there so here's the basic outline this is just the first layer of scratches so it looks really hollow and shallow I guess uh, but it's the basic shape that's important all of these scratches are kind of where I want them to be. And I'll just go back in there with a second coat once this dries and just kind of try my best to copy the same shape. And if I go outside a little bit, that's okay. It'll create kind of like a, uh, a more shallow area around the normal scratch, which can, I guess, make it look even better. So, and then after that, we'll add the black burn marks. So now I've finished the white part of the weathering. Uh, one thing that I will say is that you want to avoid a lot of tiny scratch marks uh, and try to focus on like, you know, maybe four or five large scratches. Uh, Cause that just catches the eye better or more. And it doesn't look like uh, you just, you know, painted a bunch of little scratches on it. Uh, another thing is, like, the type of scratch marks that I like to make are, like, these almost mountain shapes. Like, it's larger at the bottom and slowly goes up into a point. Like, large at the bottom and then slants upward into a point. Uh, and these ones that are in the middle... They're kind of like icicles or something, uh, where they're really pointy on the ends and then big in the middle. So yeah, try to do kind of like that. You don't want something really big on the on the tip, then sort of goes into a point, you know, uh, at the end. I think this style just looks better with like the thicker bottom that goes up into a point. So it's kind of like just drawing mountains, if you want to look at it that way. 
it might be more helpful. So that's what I do. Now we can move on to the black weathering. And to do that, I'm going to take some black acrylic paint. Uh, this doesn't have to be that flexible acrylic paint because this is just weathering. It's not really like a big part of the gauntlet, so it doesn't have to flex or anything. I take some of this and I'm going to get some water, put it in a little cup, and then mix them up. So I've got a little bit of water here, and this can be a little tricky because you want to get the right mixture uh, where it's not too uh, liquidy and it just like falls right off the gauntlet, but not too thick, like paint heavy, where you're basically just painting the whole thing black. Uh, you don't want that. Basically what we're gonna do is pour this in, mix it up, put it all over the gauntlet, all over it, and then we're just gonna wipe most of it off. And in the, I guess in some sections, it'll stay on, like with this one. You can see where, you know, just this nice uh, rough texture, especially on this, this side of the gauntlet where it's plain, there's no stripe. You can really see uh, where that black weathering detail sticks out. So we're going to try and replicate that. And you'll want to wipe in the same direction that these white scratch marks are going. So make sure you wipe you know, in that direction, not like up and down. Okay. So just get a little bit of paint. If you get too much, just add more water. You gotta get that perfect mixture. Very often, it's been too little, and it just falls right off the gauntlet and doesn't really stick on there like it's supposed to. And that's not what you want. So just mix it up. You'll need a paper towel for this part because we're gonna wipe it off. So, got your brush, get in the wet paint, and just kind of put it on there and brush it off. And as you can see, this is a little too, too much uh, black paint. So I'm going to water that down just a little bit more. This should rub off with a bit of water, so don't worry. All right, so I added a little bit of water, and this is about the right mixture that you want. I'll show you what it looks like. Basically, you can still see like bubbles, and it runs like it's runny. You want this kind of texture. You want it to look, uh, I guess, really soaked and wet, kind of like when you wash your car. So just brush that on there, and then take a paper towel and wipe it in the direction of the scratch marks. And most of it will come off and leave a nice texture on there. Make sure there's no like runs or spills. If there is, don't worry, just, you know, wipe it off. So this is what like the new one looks like. And this is the unweathered. So you can really tell the difference. So yeah, we're basically going to do that to the rest of it. And then we'll add some sort of black marks along the edges just to give it some more detail. So now that we have the wash all done, it's looking pretty good. But we're going to add a little bit more detail. You see like these, this black weathering all over the place. We're going to add that to make the edges pop out a little bit more. And to do that, we're just going to take regular 
black acrylic paint. This is not watered down, so you gotta be a little careful where you place it. I'm going to get a smaller brush. You just wanna get a little bit because this will really stand out against that white and orange. And just make sure you don't over weather it with the black paint. And you probably want to, you know, have your reference uh, if you make a second one so you can kind of look at both of them and see how you did the first one and make sure you kind of repeat the same thing. So make sure the marks are going in the same direction as, uh, I guess, the rest of the weathering. Just kind of highlighting that edge. Nope. And make sure you get up on the elbow as well. It's really easy to overdo it, but yeah, I actually found find that putting like smaller black marks against like the larger white paint chips is better because like the black marks are like burn marks or dirt which makes more sense for it to be kind of smaller whereas the white uh, chipping is like really big because like the paint you know came off a lot at a time Another thing, I guess when you're putting the black marks around on this stripe is you don't want to put it right on top of the white stripes or uh, marks. You want to put it around the white so that way it doesn't take away from that white uh, stra or scratch mark but it highlights it even more. So just make sure that you don't go on top of it just kind of go around it. Gotta try really hard not to ruin it. Yeah, you get the idea, I guess, from that. Another thing, uh, you can also kind of go across the uh, white and orange with this black because the black is not a paint chip it's added on like weathering so it goes across you know everything put some like right there go around around the white and it really highlights those white scratch marks. Yeah, you don't have to go around every single one of them, but I find that it uh, definitely helps bring out that detail. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that to the rest of it. And I'll catch you in a minute. Okay, now that most of the black weathering is complete, I wanted to show you a few things that you should probably, uh, I guess, consider. One is like this sort of black line around the bottom of the uh, elbow pad. I like to draw a little bit of black paint underneath of the elbow pad to really highlight it and make it look like it's you know, a separate piece of armor. Uh, it's kind of like an illusion that this is a independent piece. Um, it just kind of helps separate the two, the gauntlet and the elbow piece. But that's just one thing. Another thing is this back side. You'll want to highlight this because it is kind of a, a distinctive detail on the gauntlet. So make sure you go around 
uh, those corners and that line just kind of, you know, highlight very lightly that uh, bevel, I guess. And, you know, you can smudge it up. I like to use my finger and just kind of wipe it or smudge it, give it kind of a, uh, I guess a, a smudged effect. But yeah, we just want to go over the distinctive edges and really make uh, the shape pop out. I'll go back over it a little bit more, but that's the general idea, especially around the compad, uh, since that's kind of a distinctive feature of the right side gauntlet. Only the right side has the compad on it, the left uh, does not. So here is the completed weathered gauntlet. Obviously there are many different ways that you can weather. Like you can choose to uh, just use the black weathering and not have like the white uh, scratches all over it. Uh, that's what I did with the helmet uh, back there. There's no white chipping on the helmet. It's all just black washed with a little bit of black paint. Uh, sort of highlighting uh, the areas like this little curve around the uh, cheek side uh, just black wash whereas on these I added some white chipping I think it really brings out the paint uh, this was the first one I ever did and obviously uh, you can tell there's not a lot of white chipping on it so I'd definitely say the ones with more white chipping are better. Uh, it just kind of represents a more worn look to it and I prefer that personally. Now you can of course choose to do which, whichever one you want. I recommend that you try out some different weathering techniques and sort of figure out which type of weathering you prefer or which one you like to do the best. Uh, obviously weathering is you know accidental. It's not like uh, it's intentional so you know, don't be uh, upset if yours doesn't look exactly like this. This is just my style of weathering. Um, so, you know, feel free to experiment and try out methods of your own. So that's it for this painting tutorial, guys. I hope this was informative. Um, basically, I just went through the method that I use to paint my armor. Uh, there are obviously different ways to weather a prop. Uh, for instance, like with this helmet, you can see that I went with sort of a white uh, weathering around the edges of it, uh, just to you know give it a bit more highlight. But on this one, I just went with the black wash. There's no like white chipping around the helmet. So this is another method that you can use. Uh, I also just went with like you know a bit of black wash around the important areas to highlight. Uh, what's important on the helmet up here on the brow so you can do this or the other one uh, they both work really well uh, originally my red suit uh, didn't have any weathering on it so I went back and kind of weathered it for the first time with white paint I think it turned out okay uh, but definitely the orange is looking better uh, I kind of know what I'm doing uh, this time around so yeah this is you know, kind of what you're uh, gonna get. If you guys have any questions, feel free to join the Discord server and uh, ask a question over there. The link is in the description. Uh, there's lots of helpful people over there and people that uh, have shared their work. And if you guys want to be a part of a community projects video that's coming up, uh, there's a link to uh, one of my uh, channels in Discord where I'll uh, download any of the pictures you submit there and compile them into a video that I'll put on my channel later on. So check that out if you're interested. So that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.